May 4th, Theodore Weld. Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. In 1833, Weld helped found the American Anti Slavery Society, and during the next decade, he advised members of the United States Congress about issues regarding anti-slavery. By 1834, when he was 31 years old, Weld was advocating for immediate abolition, as opposed to colonization, which was the more popular anti-slavery position of the early abolitionist movement in America. He went to seminary in Cincinnati, where he and his fellow seminary students did more than talk about racial equality. They acted. They devoted themselves to helping Cincinnati's black population, and Weld took a position as the American Anti-Slavery Society's agent for Ohio, a position that earned him the title of the most mobbed man in America. Weld fought slavery until 1865 when the 13th Amendment ended the evil practice. In the interim, he established a fully integrated school in New Jersey a school that accepted students of all races and both genders. On this date, in 1839, Weld published the story of more than two million slaves. Here's his story. A man who stands against evil despite personal cost can change destiny. In 1810, six-year-old Theodore Weld was sitting in the common school classroom when a new student joined the class. His name was Jerry, and he was an African-American. The teacher immediately separated Jerry from the rest of the class and spoke down to him as if he were below the others. As young as he was, Theodore was the son of a minister, and he knew that the way the teacher was treating Jerry was not right. It was scary to go against the teacher, especially when he was one of the smallest ones in the class. But Theodore spoke up and asked his teacher if he could sit next to Jerry. He couldn't just watch someone be mistreated and not say anything about it. It was almost as if keeping still would mean that he was a part of the evil thing that was going on, and he wasn't. Theodore knew God loved both Jerry and him the same. This lit a fire in Theodore, the knowledge that God loves everyone equally, even the outcast, especially the outcast so Theodore would love the outcast. 24 years later, Theodore showed up in Cincinnati, Ohio, where slavery had been abolished in 1802. But just across the river, in slaveholding Kentucky, thousands of slaves had their hearts and minds set on escaping across the river to Ohio. There, they thought they would be free. They would be treated differently, better. But Ohio wasn't the promised land they had thought it would be. While Ohio had abolished slavery, escaped slaves were not welcome. Still, determined slaves did escape to Cincinnati, and they gathered in ramshackle communities and tried to make lives for themselves. But as their population increased, the white Cincinnatians' tolerance decreased. In packs, white people invaded black neighborhoods, burned their homes, and beat the people. Theodore took a stand against these vigilantes, and he became friends with the black community. Theodore stepped in and helped them. He became close and accepted them, the way God accepts us. In 1834, Theodore gathered a group of fellow seminary students to stand up for the immediate abolition of slavery in the United States. He organized a wave of speeches and debates over 18 days to convert fellow students and teachers toward immediate abolition. But it cost him. The majority of people around him did not agree with his abolition of slavery policy, not for the whole country. Even the minister who led his seminary thought Theodore's activities were so scandalous that he tried to stop him. In the end, Theodore left the seminary and devoted himself fully to the American Anti-Slavery Society, traveling and lecturing that slavery was a national sin. At a time when slavery was running rampant in the South, no matter what anybody said or did, Theodore remained focused on the truth 
that all men are created equal and in the image of God. He grabbed a hold of God's heart for these people and spoke up for them. But what he did incited mobs. With their canes, pro-slavery activists beat Theodore. They stoned him. His crusade to treat the outcasts like human beings was so vocal that he became known as the most mobbed man in America. For Theodore, it was worth it. These people were created in God's image. In Ephesians 5, it says, Do not participate in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead expose them. Therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise. In what ways can you make a positive difference in your world, even if it means going against the status quo? A man who stands up against evil, despite personal cost, can change destiny. Thank you for listening to today's story. Every day of the year, our hope is to inspire you with real life stories of faithful men who have gone before us. Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Join us tomorrow for another story at 365christianmen.com.